and Jean Serge Gagnon here. So today we're going to talk about something a little different than usual. You know, normally I post about building a business online, how to sell your courses, how to create and brand yourself, what personal branding, attraction marketing. Obviously, if you want to see any of that, definitely go to my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, go to my blog, and get on my list and all that good stuff. But today we're going to go behind the scenes, we're going to go back there inside this mind and talk about what it takes to build a custom a website what I'm doing with Click eCourse we're going to talk about the code I'm using we're going to show you some code examples we're going to show you some some of the things I do to uh, make sure that I can have other programmers work on the site and the complexities a little bit about of, of how you come up with some um features how you add things and you know what it takes and what I'm doing and that's yeah pretty much so we're going to go inside the mind in the back of how it all works and how you build your own php based custom website we're going to talk about that now I'm not promising that you'll be able to build a website tomorrow after this but this will give you an idea of how complex things can be and how you can start doing it all right we'll get into that but first this so the real question is this what are the strategies techniques and tools that you need to learn to generate residual income from the e-learning boom that's happening right now my name is Jean-Serge Gagnon and welcome to Course Income Secrets all right so you want to build a website or maybe you just want to see what the hell is going on inside this head this head of this program I've been programming websites with PHP for probably I'd say since 1995 or so is when I first got into it maybe 1998 around that time frame at, at the end of the 90s I started learning PHP and started to build websites so PHP is a language that lets you build dynamic pages and you know Facebook and Twitter and I'm, I'm not sure what other but those platforms use PHP I don't know if they still use it today but they did use it at a, at a certain point and then you know so there's different layers right so there's the back end which you might have heard that word before back end is where things happen behind the scenes where you don't even know what's going on and all you see is what we call the front end which is the website right so if we go let's just say I go and I show you um this uh, this uh, my screen here to share with you what the front end looks like right so where's my webcam this up webcam so that's the what you're normally used to seeing now this part here is kind of programmer geek stuff uh let me just uh let me just resize this so you can see the screen properly whoops it's not letting me move it oh there you go I think my computer is a little busy it's a little busy it actually didn't where is my where is it where did it go debug look look at that not responding well you can't see it because I got the screen but it's coming it's coming yeah uh, we're definitely going to get there there it is right here okay there we go so and then I'm going to resize this a little bit to fit the view uh, of my screen right there if we can get to the view there we go that's almost uh, almost there almost there there you go like this and then over here we're just going to get my cursor to come back and there we go all right so now we have the whole screen and you can see let's just close this guy out but this is you know a website right so you go to the website actually let's go to the real site because this is my debug site that little red stuff is for me uh, but if I go to click eCourse so there's a difference between a website that's custom and a website that's like based on a framework like for example WordPress WordPress is a framework that lets you build a website on top of whatever is the back end part of it is all, actually WordPress is all programmed in PHP as well and that is all a code that runs on a server somewhere and you have a way of creating pages you know creating posts all that stuff that's all integrated into the platform right so if we go to a website like this this here is the 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 front end right so this is the front of the website now if I show you if I go and I look at say for example 
a view page source which is one of the things that you know programmers will do you can see in here there's a whole bunch of different things you'll see that there's some metadata here that shows you like you know the content the section the name the publisher that stuff is for seo for search engines there's also a source that is loaded up here from other locations and then there's code right in here that's like these are tags like this the linkedin tag the google ads the pinterest tag so these are tags it's th things that are added to the header and then there's custom code right here which is part of what is being built as part of the platform as you can see there's a whole bunch of different things that are set here and then there's a uh, again some more down here and there's uh then there's the body uh, the actual html which as you can see is nothing there's nothing there uh if you know anything about uh html you know that this doesn't display anything that's actually all that the website is showing now but if I go and I use the uh what's called the inspect if I right click on this and I say inspect and this is in chrome and chrome you can do that you can look at the actual resulting html because that's what we see we don't necessarily see because there is multiple things going on as you can see if you can see that this like when we looked at the source all we saw was these divs here and then, then this right there was no content inside of this inside of this this is being generated if I look at for example on the network side of things you can see that uh, if I reload the page you can see what is going on there's different requests look at that there's a whole bunch of stuff going on what is all this right what is all this now if you if you don't know the site it's really hard to figure out what's going on without understanding but I can tell you right now the way that this site works is that if I uh first of all it goes and it loads some javascript it loads some peach well actually yeah it loads some javascripts on the client side from the php being run on the back end side right and then what happens is that it executes functions and features and things like that to go and get additional things like for example it goes and runs this uh, uh get elements where is that get the data get elements right here so this here let's uh, this here uh gives us the information from the page I don't know if we can't really see that's not very good let's uh let's make this a full screen here let's uh, make it over here I got it on my other screen let's bring it back over here and let's just make it full screen whoops fill it up so you can see what this is all about okay so there's other displays you can use but anyway so over here you can see that it has different pages different rows inside of the uh, the html and then there's the this is the page whoops and we have html right here which is the html that we get I don't know if can we see uh, show more yeah so we can see right here well you can't really see because it's all all one line but this is the html that's being displayed on the page anyways that's okay that's just you know just kind of how things work let's show you what it looks like in the back end so under the covers we have code like this uh, for example the index which is the starting page is quite a bit of code right if you can see down here we got all this code on the page that sh that displays things based on what's going on who's accessing and all that it's 782 lines of lines of code but that's just the basics I mean there's look at that there's a whole bunch of other things in this in this site there's there's a group php index php uh, leaders login um, then there's media then menu and page and privacy rules paypal plans register and then there's a, a, a file called functions which I'm not, I'm not seeing here so let's just do lsstar.php so we have functions right here which is the biggest file in the system which is 598k so I don't know how many lines that is we can look it up then there's a go which is the interaction between the html and the display and then there's all these other things like paypal here is a 35k file and uh, index is 25k item is 47k these different things so those are different things that are going on uh, so the idea is that the first thing that happens with a php site if you were to build your own php site you would start with an index.php you have to make sure that 
your um, back end responds to that now I'm not going to go into how to do that because it really depends on what you use whether you use is or apache or nginx or there's a bunch of different um, web services that you can set up now for me I actually use docker now in my docker setup as you can see right here I've got a whole bunch of docker images what I do is I have a blue green uh this uh setup what that means is that when I do a change in the code it uh, there's a process that puts everything together from my code base because uh, my code base is in git <laughs> so I know this is all pretty technical stuff so if you're not a technical person obviously just go ahead and jump off and go listen to some of my other audios which I talk about more about mindset I talk about building businesses online I talk about personal branding attraction marketing I talk about social media strategies I talk about all sorts of different things that have to do with course income generation how you generate income online and right now I'm just kind of in the nitty-gritty of the platform and how I'm setting up this and I want to show you that I, it's not a fly-by-night thing I'm building it in a way that's going to make it sustainable scalable and functional in a long time right okay so we're talking about the docker so the way it works okay here's the thing so the way it works is I have code right I have code in here a bunch of files if I look at this functions I mean it's it's just and you know it's just a bunch of code that uh, generates html that executes things based on what's in the database and things like that so I have it's a lamp platform right so a lamp platform means I have linux I have apache I have mysql and I have php now lamp can also be used for um uh, 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 python or uh there's another one that they the, the p is for Perl, right so it can either be Perl, python or php but usually it's php and then apache uh, l a m p there's also wamp which is windows instead of linux and then you can have apache and then the mysql you could use postgres you could use MariaDB. um it, it doesn't really matter it's a database that contains information like in our case here let's show you a little bit in my case we have show tables we have oops we have a database with all these you know all these tables right all these tables all contain things so for example if I was to look at uh lessons so lessons whoops oh I'm not in the right database here but that's okay uh I'm in the wrong one I'm in green now green is alive and show tables and select start from lessons right so now you see all the lessons all the data for the lessons right what the url is the, the files all this information is in the database so there's a database right so there's a database there's the code and then there's the the server and then there's the whole putting it all together right I could have just code which I actually started out when I first started out I had a website and then I had a directory and then in there I put my index file and I put a bunch of I started putting a bunch of other files the first website I actually built was a, a photo a photos management site which was just to manage my own personal photos and I had no database when I started it was just all file based I was just reading through directories and things like that and it was just on my server and whenever I made changes it was always there just live right which is the benefit of PHP you can actually edit things live and you'll see it happen right away on the screen when you reload the page right and we'll show you that in a second uh so but first I want to kind of explain to you how I do this this live thing so I have the the code the code lives in a code base platform now it could be you could use github you could use anything uh, but we we use our own uh, git git server and we have it stored in our server and I'll show you that what it looks like uh, log in. go just sign in so in there you have all the different uh, repositories I mean we have a bunch of repositories set up send grid wordpress queue commission web ui so the web ui one is where most of the code is 
obviously you can't you don't have access to this it's private but I mean you can see right here all the files that are in here right uh we have like like I was showing you functions index and then there's a bunch of different other files and then there's you know images and scripts if I go to scripts so I can see what are the javascript scripts right so like under javascript this is the javascript code <coughs> I'm sorry so the javascript code is just as important as the the, the PHP code the difference is that the JavaScript code runs on the client right it runs on the persons like on your computer in your browser it doesn't run on our servers so you want to you want to use that to your advantage in the sense that if you want to do lots of commute uh, com, uh, lots of computational things with the data you might want to put the data in a in a in a in a bundle and send it off to the client and do the execution on the client side because that way you don't have to use your cpu on your server for that you can use the clients and the client won't really know the difference but what it'll do is it'll benefit you in the long term where you won't have to do all this execution for say you have a thousand clients at the same time they're all using their own cpu versus all using your cpu all at the same time it's certainly going to have an impact on your services right so then the next thing is we have so what happens is we have a Jenkins server as well right so we have Jenkins Jenkins is well let's just see did the right it's probably not the right page but I'll just go up to the top again Jenkins is another uh, site that that is not accessible unless you're you know in our team but this is basically how it works so we have these we have this job that will execute uh, the process of putting everything together right so to put everything together as you can see they're all red here because the the end result isn't running at this point but let me just see if I can resize this a little bit give us the bottom scroll bar okay there we go all right so we have the bottom scroll bar right here I just want to show you kind of what it looks like whoops whoa that's okay so if I scroll here you can see what's going on kind of that the build will take the so the build will take the code out of the different repositories that we just saw here in, in here right we saw all these repositories if I go back over here you can see all these repositories the db the setup the send grid the wordpress the queue the commission web ui deploy then there's other things in here but um what it does is it, it gets all that code it gets all that code and then it runs a test then it's it figures out the version then it builds all the images as you can see this takes two minutes or one minute each right around a minute each for each of the images then after that it does a deploy right here so then it does a deploy so it takes all those images that it just put together and puts it on a temporary location and makes sure that the after that it runs a test right see a two minute test runs a test on it to make sure that it works and then it makes it available for a deploy to prod production right now their prod, de prod deploys you can see is all red for all of them um, they're all red and that's because I haven't really bothered with making sure that the this this process here does selenium tests a bunch of complicated things that I need to uh, go back and make sure they work properly but that that that's fine because it's it's not it this test here this test here is enough to make sure that the platform works and uh, it's not complete but it's you know it's a it's a start so what happens then is then I have let's do that like this then I have another job I have different jobs on the Jenkins server that let me deploy so I can deploy to prod then I have a deploy to debug the deploy to dev is not used deploy to QA either but if I do deploy to prod so what that does is it I give it a version and it actually deploys to the real server so when you go to clickycourse.com actually you can see if I look at the source view page source where is it view page source if you look at the page source you can actually see in here what version is actually on there we have this in here that's for our debugging it's version 0.1.417 and if I look over here you can see that I deployed 01417 
on the 14th of august so it's been deployed a while i haven't redeployed a new version i'm working on different new features and how that works is i have the so then i have okay so then i have another location where i deploy for debugging until i'm ready to push to production right so in my debugging environment this is why i have a debug.clickycourse.com and by the way if you try to go to debug.clickycourse.com it'll just redirect you to the main site because you need a special access to access it so don't worry about it it's fine that i <laughs> i tell you what it is what the, the debug uh, that click but on the debug site i have this this thing that shows me you know where the code is kind of thing in some places and if i click around some of the stuff uh, you'll see some debug information here like this stuff here right doesn't exist it's also a different database so i so i don't pollute the production database but once in a while i can take the database from production and bring it in to do uh, for especially when there's database changes like new tables added or new fe new features or things like that so that's why I have the separate the separate it's all separate right but it uses the same process so that means that if I'm able to successfully deploy to my debug environment then I know it'll work when I deploy to production so that's why it's a whole process it's pretty complicated right, to set all that up but it's a whole process that I know that allows me to uh, duplicate so the other the other reason I use docker and I use a Jenkins deploy jobs and I use all these different things is well because my background is uh, is in DevOps which is which is the discipline of producing automation to improve the, the the speed and the quality of code that goes to production right so if you're building a website and you're not using uh, any of this automation you're not you're not you might you might break something without noticing it and you might have a broken website for a while until you notice it right if somebody finds it and tells you whereas if you automate uh testing and automate validation automate deployment automate everything you can have a, a, a deploy to production only when things work the other thing that what I did what I'm doing uh, gives me is that whenever the the website gets to a point where it's super busy and there's more and more people using it then I will be able to scale to what what we call kubernetes or we call or cloud-based services and that kind of stuff and by the way the servers that I'm using are servers in a cloud farm if you will it's called ovh in montreal so they're they're hosted well they're some of them are in new york some of them in in europe they're hosted through that company and it's a physical server that's on the internet i have uh what we call vmware on there and <laughs> on vmware i have the different servers set up so that i can access um, them remotely and then I can deploy things on them and I can set them up the, the way that I need to um yeah so that's yeah okay so let's show you a little bit of how I would do some changes right so for example right now I'm actually working on a new feature for pages and groups as you can see on the menu here pages is there but when I go here there's no pages here right uh, but on the debug site there's a pages and group thing right so there's no bit oh, sorry the pages isn't, isn't is still in development so the groups one is well the page is not even started yet but the groups one I'm kind of starting to if I go for example to one of these groups that I'm testing so I'm still working on the navigation and how to get to things and whatever but for now I have this like group that I want to let's say I want to fix it I, I don't want the this is the description of the group I don't want it I want it to show it in the about right so right now I've got this that's on top of this and with this with this this I'm not really sure about this whole thing how that's all working so if I go back to the code and then I look at my uh, my functions I don't remember where that is oh yes I okay so if I go and look for group <clears throat> I don't even all right so yeah if I go over here oh uh, it's not showing up uh, I want to find out where this group is so my groups let's search for my groups my groups so there's whoops there's the code this is get group page tabs 
and if I'm not sure how that comes up I can say where is that at right here and that's there there's also get group where's the group the group page dine div group page that's what I'm looking for so I'm trying to figure out where that code is there's so many so much data so many lines that I sometimes forget where the code is right so get group page html that's what I want so I want to go find that then over here I find the code that displays the group and you know what I'm going to do I'm actually going to add a debug info here so d uh, html that debug div this is group this is get group page html in underscore file at underscore line so you'll see now right now I just added that just to kind of show you how that works so I'm just saving that and then I go over here and I just reload this page and now you're going to see this red line up here hopefully if I did this right there you go yeah so it shows me right now so that way it'll it'll make it easier for me to to find it next time when I'm looking for this I can just go to the line 3798 of this script right and that's only going to show in the debug environment which is what I'm in right now so what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to look at the the display of the group so that's over here in this over here just dine div group feed which will display the group feed which is this here and that will be the defined whoops actually that'll be here there's the group feed there's the feed right here and I have I'm trying to remember where what the, and and like you see as you can see it's very it's very there's lots of stuff going on and how to figure out what goes where and what to do and everything it's not always simple but right now this is kind of what I'm doing I'm just kind of going back trying to figure out where I was how I do what how do I make changes to this particular screen and I'm trying to remember what I do what I need to do and I'm pretty sure that <coughs> let me see dine div group feed is here that's not right oh right okay okay so under scripts in my javascript that's where it is it's right over here so I got this guy here there we go there it is that's what I was looking for now this one here is going to allow I want to I, I want to fix it so that I can make this show up properly I've got this guy here this is the title description I don't necessarily want the description here so if I take the description out right here and I reload this page you can see that description down there is going to disappear it's not going to be there anymore right so there's no description anymore right now if I want to make it I want to make it so that I can actually post so let me just uh, actually what I can do is I'm going to add myself to the group so select star from group members there's nobody in the members group right so if I want to describe the group members I want to see what is what it looks like and then I want to select star from groups all right so now I want the ins uh, and this is not obviously this is back-end stuff this is like debugging this is not how the site would work there should be a button on the site and all that but I'm just going to insert into group oops, into group members set uid equals 30 group gr is it gr id or group id it's group id group id id is equal to number one and access equals yes <clears throat> add ts equals Unix and uh, what else there's no remote okay there so now I have access to this now if I reload this I think it should I uh, hopefully I did that right it should allow me to create a post in the group 
and there we go look at that okay so hello group so testing group post and I'm just going to click on post right here <coughs> and then so now I've got to figure out what's going on why this isn't working because it should have normally added this as a post it should have actually put in here what I just typed and it should be a new item in the group I still have to figure out the, the layout and all this but that's whew, that's inside the head that's kind of what the groups what the group posting looks like you know like I said there's there's code there's there's Jenkins jobs there's you know the the page itself the front end and then the back end and how it all works is all pretty totally totally crazy there's all this stuff in here that is all you know it's totally 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 wacky to know all this it takes a long time obviously to get there but that's the basics of how you create your own website you got to have a php you got to have a server I didn't get into all that part of the things but that's one of you know you can use docker like I'm using but you need to have the right things set up for it where you can uh, set up your own site all right so hopefully you enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode this has been Course Income Secrets, the entrepreneur's blueprint to generating income from the e-learning boom. Some of your friends need to hear this message, so don't forget to share. For more content like this, go to CourseIncomeSecrets.com and make sure to subscribe and follow us here. My name is Jean-Serge Gagnon, until next time.